Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, this time looking at an Atari ST keyboard. I thought we'd just cover the common issues you get with these on uh, its own. You know, I've done the actual repair of this ST in a separate video. So the main issue you get with these, other than a single key perhaps uh, not being responsive, are the ports here, the joystick and mouse ports. The very fact that underneath and they're uh, for, you know, a sideways 90 degree profile like that, and you've got to put the cables in like that, you know, they get pulled sort of like that. The solder points uh, weaken, you know, the fracture. Uh, it's an interesting pin stuck up there, can you see that? That's a bit weird. It's like there was a component here that's been cut off. I don't think so. I think these are the legs from something being soldered on the other side. We'll have a look at that in a second. So the first thing you need to do is start to remove all of these uh, little screws. You do have to lift this plastic up here like this, peel it back a bit in order to expose some of the ones like that. So we're just getting to the last few screws under here now. Now from memory, the best way to work on these is get some books or something and lift it like that off the floor on both sides so that it's, it's up like that and just held by the, the plastic edge, not the keys. Just makes it so much easier to work on. I'm going to try and do it without it just to see how we get on. And if you're really unlucky, let me see if I can show you points it like this, can you see the plungers stick, look at that, they're all stuck on the uh, thing there, so we've got no choice, we need to carefully lift it up like this, and we're going to have to re-see them all into the holes. Just be mindful you've got your LED down here that needs to come out, or you're just going to kind of bend it off, there we go, it's coming out now. Yeah, look at that, super annoying. Because each one of these now we're going to have to pull off, you know, clean the underneath of there with some IPA, wipe that gently with IPA, and then put the plunger back into the key. Yeah, and note over here, we've not got a full complement. We've got one missing. There's one there that I think goes here, by the looks of things, but we've got one missing there. The enter key, uh, return key, has got uh, a couple, and it only ever has one actually fitted. So at this point I would now just start uh, collecting these up. I'm going to stick a little uh, red dot next to that one there that I believe doesn't need to be there. So a quick super macro there. I don't know how clear that's coming out but there are little like rings. Can you see that one there? Little rings around there to indicate. Whilst there might not be a completely broken bad solder point now, there soon will be. That's probably one of the better ones I've seen, but again, you can see like fatigue around the uh, solder points there on both of those, I think. Yeah, look at that one there, and that one, I think. So we'll resolder those points in a minute. The next thing we're going to do is just go gently over each key, like this, with IPA. You need very little. They've got like a carbonised surface there, and if you rub too much off, you will uh, stop it from working very well. Or stop it working at all. So I gently wiped over every single one of those. You can see with that one cotton bud, that's what it looks like at the end, because obviously some of that black stuff does wear off there, but that's just, the, I used one for the whole lot. And on several of these, there was what I would class as a bit of debris. So as you wiped it, you could see like a join between the two halves. You know, you've got two things like all like that, and then the plunger obviously makes the contacts between the two. But there were bits in between of the black carbonized stuff, and as soon as I wiped over it, it came off. So that could register as a false positive, you know, a key being stuck down. And they did have that once or twice with this, where you'd power it on and you could hear do -do 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 -do, as if a key stuck down and actually nothing's been pressed. So that's why you need to wipe all of these in that way. So the next thing we need to do with this particular one is clean there. Can you see that? It's like the flux has gone weird or something just around where that LED is. So we may as well clean that while we're here as well. I'll check the other one out on the other side. And there's a bit of discoloration here. Look on the PCB. As if something's got onto it. Maybe a bit of flux or something. I don't know. Just there. You need to make sure the legs on those LEDs are not uh, shorted either, you know, come into contact with each other as part of the removal process. Because I noticed the one down by the power, the green one down there, the legs were almost touching. If you look at the heat shrink on it, I'll show you a little bit closer in a sec. You can see it's, uh, it's shrunk over time, it's shrunk further, so it doesn't even reach the top of the LED there. So it'd be very easy if you bend that LED to actually short those legs together. So do make sure they are isolated from each other before you reassemble it. So I'll reflow the port solder points there now. So uh, I'm around 400 degrees here on the uh, Heiko. 
and we'll add some fresh solder containing uh, flux here to each point to leave it long enough to reflow properly. So I even those off a bit by dabbing into them with no solder on the uh, tip there. I'm going to get a little bit of 5PA here and have a little bit of a brush. You can wipe over this area with the uh, cotton buds and stuff in a minute just to clean it up a little bit further. Yeah, as you can see, those are looking pretty good now. Well, here's something you don't see every day, and I'm not sure what to make of it. I just noticed this and thought, is that a hair? No, it's not. It's actually a strand of wire, soldered from here, just floating. What's that all about? Was that joined onto something at some point? I don't know. So, I think I'm just going to uh, snip that off here, actually. Um, the solder points look okay around there. I don't really know what, where that's come from, or how it's got there. So we're on to the home run now, I just need to get the rubber plungers in here, um, clean each one before I put it in. You can see I've got it supported on the very edge here with the component tray, and the same over here. It just means that none of the keys are depressed, because this is the bit that's really fiddly unless you support it on either side with something like that. So again, just a tiny dot of IPA like that, uh, and then you can you know, sit it somewhere like that. This is super time consuming, it's going to take me a good 20 or 30 minutes to reassemble this now I think. I'll just give it a once over with the magnifier to make sure there's no particles of dust anywhere that I've missed but I'm pretty sure I've got them all. Make sure they're also all totally level and in their uh, positions there. Uh, and then because you've got those things holding it at the sides, uh, you can literally just sit the PCB back on there, put a few screws in. Feed the LED through first, by the way. You might need to straighten those if they bent like mine did. Um, and then you can just screw it into position. So this LED here, I had to just squash it down a little bit because I'll show you what I did. If you get the LEDs, uh, aligned, well, that LED there aligned first, because that's the hard one, on this one anyway, to get in position, there we go. And then just make sure the one on this side has gone through the hole as well. It's uh, here, actually, the... Uh, floppy drive LED, watch sure you don't get your cable trapped there like that and then if you hold it together really firmly like this and flip it up you can actually inspect to see the height of the LED, that one's right now and I think that one's okay, it's protruding a little bit more than the other one but you can always just uh, push it, it's protruding a little bit too much that look so that needs pushing back in just a little bit because it will interfere with the uh, plastic part and if we support it again there and I can just start to get the screws in. I'd probably stick uh, some of the ones in the middle first and then do some of the outer ones and then you can just put it on the floor and put the remaining screws in. The only thing we need to do is get that bracket there. Um, these are much bigger screws here so you can't mix these up. All the others are super small ones. I mean these are fiddly to uh, maintain. Don't over tighten these either. Fiddly to maintain but you hardly ever have to go in here, uh, well, other than every time you get any, one of these it's never been serviced, you'll have to do the, certainly solder the points there on the ports. Um, but a testament to the design, you know, these have lasted. If you look at other keyboards of the same era that used a membrane, the membranes break, but, you know, the fact this has got a PCB here means that these are pretty hard uh, wearing, you know, long lasting. It's just a case of the keys yellow a bit. And you can pull these off and retro bright them. I'm not going to do that though. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to upgrade this in any kind of way in future videos. Or whether we'll just uh, pass it on as is. The big problem with this is obviously the case for this one if you've seen the repair. It's not in great condition. I mean it is now it's all been epoxied back together. But uh, yeah it's not going to be very long lasting the case. So let's connect it up and test it. The yellow wire is the one that goes to the connection on its own down the bottom here. If we just plug that in and we'll put it into position. So I'll connect uh, the diagnostics cartridge in a minute, but you could use other software to test the keyboard. Switch it on, just check the power LED, that's okay. Switch it off. And if we test the uh, floppy LED, yep, that's lighting as well. Uh, this I raised a little bit. This was not making a very good illumination through the uh, top part of the plastic. You can see on the case here, you've got one there for the floppy drive. So if that LED is not raised enough, it won't shine through it very well, and that was what was happening. The power LED was nice and bright, the uh, floppy LED was not, because I think that had been knocked and 
pressed in. So as I said, there's many ways to test the keyboard. You could just, uh, you know, load Gem up there and uh, a word processor or uh, text editor or something. Test the keys that way. But obviously, for some of the keys, like function keys, it might be difficult to test that way. You can probably get a keyboard test program as well. I'm sure there's going to be something online where you can get a floppy disk image of a uh, test program. So I've booted the diagnostics there. Press K for keyboard. Return. Um, then we can press each key. So F1, F2, F3. I'll report back in a minute. Six isn't working. Plus isn't working. Two's not working. Wow, I can't believe how many keys aren't working. This is an interesting problem actually, and I've managed to fix it. I've seen this before on STs, the two's still a problem. Because the key plunger has been swapped from another place and rotated around and cleaned, you might find that it's not making a very good connection. So you can press it, you don't get any response, and if you press it quite hard and press it a few times, like two's working there, it starts to work. So it's like just having tested it and started it, you know, it actually starts to work and then it continues to work. Does that make sense? Like plus is alright now. Six, two. And I can show you that here, look, two, six, plus, those were not working at all a minute ago, plus is still a bit flaky, that needs a bit more. But uh, yeah, you may need to tr do that, if that doesn't work, you'll obviously need to take it back to pieces again, clean the key and the PCB area again, plus is alright now I think. You could always replace the plunger. But it's interesting how, I've never seen that on other keyboards, but I do remember seeing this on the ST, that sometimes you can get a problem key, and just by virtue of pressing it a number of times, even though you've cleaned everything up there, it can start to work again. It's almost like as the pad starts to level out, as from being pressed, you get a good connection, having pressed it a number of times, and from there on in, it starts to be reliable. So the H key was doing nothing. I think we've only got one more key that's not doing anything. That's the right key. I'll show you that in a sec. But and I think it's because the surface we've levelled it. But you know they're worn and they're not they're not the sat the same way round they were before, and that's the problem. So unless you repeatedly press the key, can you hear that? It's registering every time now. It was doing nothing at all. I could do that. Press that key fifty times like that. Not a single click, and now it's okay. Just as a consequence of going like that for maybe 50 or 100 times it's sprung back to life and it's uh, you know it's as the the, the 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 rubber you know the carbonized bit presses onto it you know you gradually sort of wear it a little bit and sit it into position till it gets to the point where it makes a nice flat contact ideally you'd want to replace the plunger but trust me i've seen this before this happened on my keyboard i had one or two keys on mine doing this after i cleaned it up um, to be fair some of the keys weren't working before i cleaned it up on mine but this is now fine apart from one key which I'll show you. What I'll do is just keep pressing and pressing and pressing that and I guarantee eventually it will spring to life. See that? We got an arrow look. Sometimes it's a case of putting your finger on it and wobbling it like that and then with more presses and more wobbles it will start to respond it's perhaps a bit of resistance on the surface there after having cleaned them, that's probably what it is. You know, it alters the resistance slightly, but once you actually start to use it in anger, you can start to see we're getting the occasional press there, look. Give me a minute, and I guarantee that will start to uh, be reliable. Look, you've got another one there, look. And another, and another, and another, and another. Look, it's speeding up. See that? There you go, look, it's starting to get there. Look at that now. So yeah, totally weird and unorthodox because what I'm doing here, where it stopped there, the other thing with this technique is to press on a certain part of the key, like I'm pressing here and it's not registering. If you press in the middle or to the right, it does. So there's a bit of technique involved to, to press it where it's not working, do the same thing until it starts working. It's starting to work. As you can see, we're getting the uh, occasional, even though I'm pressing on the left-hand side of it rather than the centre. And if I'm pressing the centre again, it's still working. I press the right-hand side, it's working. So, yeah, it's a bit weird. You might think that's really strange. I actually pressed down then. I accidentally pressed down then by mistake. You might think that's a bit uh, weird. 
but it's just one of the quirks of, uh, that you sometimes get with these ST keyboards after having cleaned them up and reassembled them. It can make you think it's faulty and it, you know, a plunger needs replacing completely. It doesn't. It just needs, like this here, a bit of constant uh, use and then it will be fine there on after. That's pretty solid now, that key. So every key is working 100% there, no matter which side you press it on. Like this tab key wasn't doing anything. And then I got it working in the middle by pressing it about 50 to 100 times to start working. I found if I pressed it to the right, it wasn't working very well. Again, turn it 20, 30 times like that, suddenly start working. Left side, not working at all. 20 or 30 times, suddenly start working. Another 20 or 30 times, reliable, no matter how you press it. Um, these keycaps, you can just get them off with a keycap pull like this. Well, it can just pull straight off there. So you could clean them all up in the sink if you wanted to, or replace them if uh, need be. You can get some of the spares, like the little rubber silicon part you saw inside the little uh, you know, circular bit with the black carbonized bit. You can get those spare, uh, Atari Freaks and a few other people sell those on eBay. And it's the same with keycaps. If you've got a keycap missing or damaged, you'll pick up uh, the odd one uh, from people like Atari Freaks uh, and the plungers as well if one of those is broken on yours. So all done and reassembled and I know what you're thinking, you're thinking that maybe what I've shown you would not be reliable but I've been testing this over a few weeks here now and uh, had the, you know, the cartridge in the side there and gone through and tested every single key like on a daily basis to make sure they're still working and they are 100% reliable, there are no bad keys on this whatsoever. It's a really weird process having to actually hammer away at the key for a minute or two and then eventually as you saw it's, you get the odd character starting to appear and then after about another 20, 30 seconds of that it starts to be you know con consistent from that point on um, and you do have to press like say on different sides of the key sometimes as well you may find that uh, you know one key just works no matter what, which way you press it but there'll be another one where you get it working but it only works when you press it dead in the middle if you press it to the right little bit it doesn't so you have to kind of repeat the thing as I showed you know, on the different sides of the key I would say there were about eight keys on here that were behaving that way after cleaning it up Prior to cleaning it up, the only one we had an issue with was this. So it's kind of ironic, isn't it? After we cleaned up, this one was alright. And we had like six or seven other keys that weren't okay. If you can support the channel, please see the uh, Patreon and coffee links down below. Just one dollar a month means I can continue to do these videos. I hope you found the video interesting. Catch you in the next one.